Thank you to Verta Stargo for their generous donation on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in their generosity, the link to my Patreon page is in the description. Well, Clyde probably didn't get the spell. He's probably back here. Artemy and Cole skid to a stop as the sound of an angry crowd echoed through the narrow hallway. All those mind-controlled people will reach them soon. Sir Cole, you are familiar with the layout of this building, yes? What is the best place to hide and formulate a plan? Uh, let me down and maybe I'll tell you- Ah, <laughs> oh, my apologies. I'm afraid I'm rather anxious at the moment. Cole picked himself off the floor with an indignant scoff. You can't just hide in a random room. Those folks will probably be searching through every nook and cranny. We'll be found out eventually. Here, move aside. Cole raised his hand, spark of sparks of illusionary magic flickering between his fingertips. Snap, prestidigitation. All the candles in the hallway were immediately snuffed out. It was so dark, Artemy could bear scarcely see her own hand in front of her face. Confused shouting and yells reverberating reverberated through the dim hallway along with the sound of angry men stumbling into each other. Uh, I understand. This is an excellent plan, Sir Cole. Not yet. Here we go. Minor illusion. Good thing spell slots aren't a thing in this thing, in this game. Otherwise, you'd have run out of your shit a long time ago. Minor illusion. The door to Clyde's office instantly disappeared in wisps of magic, leaving behind a solid stone wall. Incredible! My education at the church could never cover illusion magic. I never thought it could be so versatile. This should keep them busy for a while. Those guys aren't exactly aren't very smart when they're being controlled. Come on, let's head inside. And now we're back inside. Artemy and Cole let out sighs of relief as the door to Clyde's office snapped shut behind them. Uh, and not a moment too soon. Heavy footsteps flooded the hallway as the mind-controlled crowd caught up to them. Where'd they go? I can't see a damn thing! They must be hiding in one of the rooms. Search them! This was met with monotone hollers of agreement. Yeah. <laughs> Cole and Artemy pressed their bodies against the door in anticipation of a forced entry, but none came. The crowd had ran into the room, ran into all the rooms except theirs, thanks to Cole's illusion magic. Whew. It appears we have fooled them for now. Are you alright, Sir Cole? Cole scoffed. Does it look like I'm alright? I blacked out for a moment during Sid's fight with Val, then I get zapped awake! And then I find an angry, mind-controlled crowd chasing me. What's the big idea? Well, they wouldn't be chasing you if you hadn't attempted to steal that ruby from under Val's nose with your illusion magic. I wasn't going to take any chances. As Pop always says, we don't fight fair, we fight to win. That is dubious advice, to say the least. Cole pulled a large, triangular ruby out of his pocket and waved it smugly in Artemis' face. If I hadn't stolen this, that hooded fellow would have succeeded in whatever horrible thing they were planning to do here. I'd say this was a pretty smooth move on my part. And then you get Clyde who's like, yeah, and I bet you're an asshole or whatever. Cole squinted at the office door. Who was that hooded fellow anyway? You got any ideas? Artemy shook her head dejectedly. I haven't a clue. It is clear that they are after the rubies from the prince's crown, and that they are a powerful mage. Defeating them will prove difficult, especially when they have everyone in the fighting ring under their control. I hope to retreat and buy ourselves some time to formulate a plan. Artemis sighed and hung her head dejectedly. I am ashamed to say, I was unable to free Sir Sid from that mage's control before we escaped. May the creator keep him safe while we sort things out. Hey, at least you got me to safety. Could have been a lot worse. A low groan suddenly reverberated from the back of the office. Someone had stood up from behind the couch, closing their, clutching their head in a daze. And now I got a sense of this, so let's get... Uh, let's choose uh, grapes. Ugh, feels worse than my hangover from last week. He's naked. What happened? Part of me shrieked and covered her eyes. <laughs> Sir Clyde, please go make yourself decent! Huh? What are you 
folks doing in my office? Cole rolled his eyes and patted a horrified Artemis shoulders. Cover up your bits, Clyde. I know you like being nude when I'm around, but keep it in your pants when we have company. <laughs> Clyde blinked blankly, or blinked blankly, his wits slowly returning. Oh. Alright, I guess clothes are a good idea. Hurry up, please! A few minutes later, after Clyde struggled to put on his loincloth, the three of them huddled around the office desk to discuss their current situation. Okay, so we can, we can shrink uh, grapes back down. You served us well, grapes. Artemis stood a considerable distance away from the couch as she explained to Clyde about the cloaked mage's actions. The tiger listened and massaged his temples in disbelief. All this happened while I was out? Jeez, I don't remember anything after leaving the fighting ring to check on my office. Uh, yeah, that mage must have charmed you and stolen the crown while you were out. You gotta be more careful, Clyde. <laughs> Artemis shot Cole a confused glance. But I thought you said- Ouch! The hyena kicked her from under the table with a will you shut the fuck up look on his face. Artemis just looked even more confused. Meanwhile, Clyde was too busy musing in his own thoughts to notice their little exchange. I didn't think anyone had the guts to cause trouble in my fighting ring. This is the one strong mage we're dealing with. Not to mention dangerous. Clyde scratched his chin thoughtfully. I'm afraid I won't be very useful in the fighting department, unfortunately. Uh-huh. But you're the leader of a fighting ring, are you not? Yeah, but I'm more of a businessman and behind-the-scenes sort of guy. This whole fighter outfit is just for show. I actually used to be a blacksmith by trade until... Clyde glanced at Cole out of the corner of his eye and sighed. Anyway, uh, back on the topic. If I understand the situation correctly, uh, our next best course of action should be to figure out a way to free everyone from this mage's spell. And that will prove quite difficult. We cannot confront them head-on, since the mage would just force the mind-controlled people to retaliate. Or use them as meat shields. Artemis nodded solemnly. I am not willing to risk the lives of innocents. It appears that my dispel magic is able to break people free from the mage's hold. However, I cannot cast anything in that mage's presence, since they will simply counterspell my attempts. To make, to make matters worse, I can only cast my spells a limited number of times without rest. Oh, so there are spell slots in this game. Oh, lord. It would be impossible for me to dispel every mind-controlled person individually. I see. Then our best chance is to land your dispel magic on the mage directly and end the mind-control spell at the source. After that, we can just outnumber the mage and kick their ass! Artemis nodded again and scratched her head thoughtfully. The main problem is the mage will see us coming and counterspell us before we get the chance. She turned towards Cole, who had been fidgeting nervously at the other end of the desk. Sir Cole, you are much more experienced with battle than I am, yes? What would be a viable strategy from your point of view? Cole jerked up from his nervous daze with a scoff. What? Why are you asking me? I'm not dealing with any of this shit. Artemy froze. I excuse me? Cole hopped off his seat and paced around the office with nervous energy. There's a ton of secret exits in this building, right? Let's just run while we have the chance. After we get away, we can call just call the church knights or city watch to take care of this. This isn't my problem. An uncomfortable silence settled across the table as Artemy and Clyde stared at him in surprise. Clyde sighed and closed his eyes. You haven't changed a bit, have you? Artemy slammed her fist onto the table and stood up, her voice her voice hiss furiously through gritted teeth. Absolutely not! We must rescue everyone here, including Sir Sid! It is possible that this cloaked mage will harm the people here to remove witnesses! 
It is our duty to protect them while we still have the opportunity to do so. Cole averted his gaze from Artemis' intense glare and crossed his arms. Hey, Sid is a nice guy and all, but I'm not going to risk my life for someone I just met. That's not my job. I just agreed to help to helping you find your missing stuff and maybe earn some gold on the side. Battling a crazy mind-controlling mage was nowhere on the to-do list. Something snapped in Artemy. She forcefully pulled Cole close by his shoulder strap and almost lifted him off his feet. Her fangs bared inches from his face. Sir Sid believed in you! You believe he believed you were a good person! Someone worth fighting for! How can you just abandon him? Cole's heart raced painfully against his chest as he leaned back from the furious night. Artemis' usual polite grin vanished into feral rage. Uh, well, Sid's kind of a simpleton. He'd probably fight for anyone who gave him the time of day. Artemis' grip on him tightened. He shielded you with his own body during the wagon crash this morning! He was willing to fight countless men in this illegal fighting ring simply because you commanded him to do so! Did he truly misplace his trust on a shameless coward? Artemy spat the words like venom. Venom. Sir Sid has a loving mother waiting for him, a family that actually cares. What will you tell them when you leave their son to die? Is this who the son of Marrow Bonebreaker truly is? A heavy, intense silence filled the room, interrupted only by Artemy's fuming growl and Cole's thundering heart uh, heartbeat. The small hyena swallowed, his shoulders shaking. You sure you want a coward helping you? The fist that kept Cole hoisted in the air suddenly laxed. The hyena dropped to the ground with a yelp. Artemy let out a deep sigh as she stood over him. Her eyes were closed and brow furrowed in her effort to wrestle with her own temper. temper. I know that you are capable of great acts of kindness if you truly wish to do so. Perhaps courage, too. I just don't understand what is stopping you. That familiar hollow feeling engulfed Cole's chest once more as he stared up at Artemy's disappointed eyes. He slowly picked himself off the floor, off the floor with a sigh. It always came back to disappointing people, didn't it? Clyde gently cleared his throat. Not to kick the little guy while he's down, but things will be difficult, even with Cole's help. It's just the three of us against an entirety of, fight of the fighting ring crowd. What can we actually do in this kind of situation? Well, quite a bit, if you put a little thought into it. Cole sighed and began digging through his pockets. He pulled out an arcane crystal with a glint in his eye. I think I've got a decent plan to dispel that mage's control. Hey, Nighty. Can you do something for me with that magic of yours? Artemis stared at Cole quietly for several moments. Can we count on your help? The anger in her eyes had subsided, leaving only a tired, withering gaze. Even so, Cole felt his chest lurch as they made eye contact. Sure. Artemis sighed. Very well, Cole. Ooh, she dropped the sir. Explain your plan. Damn. Damn. The hallway was still dark and candleless as the mind-controlled crowd returned from their search. Val, Sid, and a dozen people from the fighting ring closed the doors to the other rooms with a slam. We've searched all the room. <laughs> all the singular room. Those two must have fled some elsewhere in the building. Search the secret exits. Val's voice was slow and slurred as he spoke. Okay, I should have I should have kept that in mind. The mage's mental grasp on him still holding strong. Others in the crowd were no better as they murmured in agreement and stumbled their way out of the hallway. Sid was about to follow them out when a low whisper suddenly flickered through the through his eye. What? He whipped his head around, scanning the now empty hallway. Oh. Over here. Sid frowned and approached an empty section of the brick wall where the whisper seemed to originate. 
Is someone there? Strange. Did he truly hear someone speaking, or were his senses messing with him? Perhaps he should report this to the mage. Uh, it's your conscience. Woo! <laughs> Come closer to the wall, and I shall uh, show you the truth behind your recent gay thoughts. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I wasn't thinking anything like that. Door suddenly appeared out of thin air and slammed open, smacking Sid in the face. He yelped and fell backwards while clutching his nose. Immediately, Clyde and Artemy leaped out to gag him and drag him into the room behind them. Sid tried to yell and thrashed about wildly. Sir Sid, control yourself! Her words fell on deaf ears as Sid launched, in, uh, launched a kick straight into Clyde's stow match, sending him wheezing on the floor. Tiger clutched his... Hmm? Okay, it was Clyde, sorry. For some reason I thought it said Cole. The tiger clutched his abdomen with a groan. This guy's stronger than he looks. I wonder why everyone lost against him today. Artemy grabbed Sid's arm and twisted it behind his back before pinning him to the floor with a thud. I'm sorry, Sir Sid. Try to resist the mage's control just a little longer. His eyes flashed red and he continued to writhe madly on the floor under her grip. Uh, we might not be able to hold him for long. Cole, are you ready yet? Jesus, she dropped the sir. Damn, that is cold. <laughs> do you see what I do you, do you see what I fucking did there? Do you see it? <laughs> Cole, are you ready yet? Behind them, Cole patted his pockets hastily. Yep, looks like I got everything I need. Alright, you two, hang tight for a bit. It's time for me to make my move. Cole dashed past the three wrestling on the floor with a wink. If you hear me scream, come to the main room immediately. I prefer to stay not dead. Clyde groaned as he struggled to pin a struggling Sid's legs. It's a lot of struggling in the sentence. Down. Just hurry up! Oh, he's making his move. Here we go. The cloaked figure grumbled with increasing frustration. The crowds of mind-controlled people slowly returned to the fighting ring, each of them empty-handed. The mage gritted their teeth anxiously as they gripped the one ruby they managed to snatch from Val earlier. Damn these stupid peasants! I need those accursed rubies! It's bad enough that the black market tiger already lost the other two. Suddenly, a tall figure with red eyes leapt into the room with a triumphant grin. A mind-controlled Sid raced across the room with his hand outstretched. Master, I have found the ruby you seek. Sid reached into his pocket and pulled out a bright red gem as dark and glistened as glistening as blood. The cloaked figure rushed forward and greedily snatched it from his hands. Good, good. It seems you lot aren't completely useless after all. As the cloaked figure examined the ruby closely, the gem's shape suddenly shimmered like wisps of heat in a hot summer day. The illusion on the ruby abruptly melted away and revealed a, a fully charged arcane crystal shuddering in their hand instead. Nice. What? What is the meaning of this? The charged arcane crystal glowed brighter and suddenly exploded with Artemis' dispel magic in a white hot flash. Hell yeah! The mage was knocked backwards in the blast with a surprised shout. As they fell, the mage felt their grip on the minds of the crowd dissipating. Everyone in the room suddenly hunched over, clutching their heads and groaning as though they were suffering a painful hangover. The sinister red glow of their eyes suddenly vanished as the crowd regained their senses. The mage picked themselves off the floor in a panic scramble. How in the world? Huh? I can't be Oh, what the- Sid? Question mark? I can't believe you fell for such a- I can't believe you fell for such a cheap trick. Impossible! Those red eyes! You should still be under my control! Oh, wow! He's fully... Oh, wow! This whole badger suddenly glowed softly before fading away in a faint white mist. Nice! The fog dissipated to reveal Cole standing over the mage with a smug grin. Disguise self is a pretty nifty spell, eh? You! Uh-oh. Cole yelped as the cloaked figure leaped and tackled him to the floor. The two of them writhed and struggled on the ground as the figure attempted to wrestle the remaining ruby out of Cole's pocket. 
Cole did his best to kick the mage off of him, but his scrawny legs did little to deter him. Hey! You should at least buy me dinner first before sticking your hands in my pants! Enough of this nonsense! Give me the goddamn ruby! Artemy, Clyde, and a freshly reawakened Sid rushed into the room. Cole! Boss, are you alright? On the edge of the ring, Val picked himself off the ground with, a, with dazed eyes. The rest of the crowd were also slowly regaining their wits. Each of them turned towards the cloaked mage, fighting Cole on the floor with pure indignation and fury in their eyes. The cloaked figure looked up at, from, the fi uh, from, the, from fighting Cole on the stone floor to see a wall of angry people approaching them, cracking their knuckles and baring their teeth. Hey, let my boss go! Your time is up, little mage. Our fighting ring doesn't take kindly to troublemakers. I'm making you pay off for all the damages to my ring, you hear? Oh, hell yeah. A sharp crackle ignited the air along with the acrid smell of lightning. Artemy readied another javelin of electricity, trained her sights on the cloaked image. Unhand Cole immediately! I shall show no mercy to those who dare to harm innocent civilians of Axia! The mage looked up and hesitated for a split second. It was enough for Cole to squirm out of their grip and leap safely into the crowd. Artemy launched her guiding bolt, and the instant Cole was at a safe distance. The bolt of lightning shot through the air, branches of electricity trailing behind it like a furious comet in the mage's direction. Shield. Oh, fucking course. Oh, shield. <laughs> the arcane wall solidified in the air with a fl in a flash. Artemy's javelin instantly dispersed into sparks of light the moment it made contact with the shield, leaving the mage behind it untouched. The cloaked figure hissed with increasing frustration at the crowd surrounding them. You fools are interfering with matters you cannot dream of comprehending! Now give me that ruby! Artemy snarled and drew her sword. You dare put the lives of innocent people in danger for a piece of jewelry?! Are you serious?! A voice rasped with barely controlled fury. You understand nothing! You didn't stand in Okay, sorry. For some reason, it didn't skip. The cloaked figure raised their hands, sinister magic weaving between their fingertips. Oh, this again. Conjure Elemental. The bricks and stones of the building suddenly began shuddering violently. What? Brick by brick, a wave of stones toppled out of the walls and conjo conjoined together into a dozen stone figures standing at the center of the fighting ring. Oh, for fuck's sake, really? No one could have swung a chair at this guy by now? The earth shook as the massive stone elementals approached the crowd, each one towering over the even the tallest fighter of the ring. The crowd screamed and immediately began retreating. Clyde watched his fighting ring fall to shambles with a hint of despair in his eyes. This won't end well. I'd hate to admit it, but we must retreat as well. Our bare fist won't do much against to, to solid stone. Stand aside! A painfully intense light suddenly illuminated the room. Cole and Sid shielded their eyes from the glow, their eyes watering from the brilliance. But like staring directly into the sun. Oh my god. Artemy had her sword drawn. That looks fucking cool. Radiant light soared across her blade with wrathful lightning. The celestial golden f f the, bleh, the celestial golden glow flickered as she took a step forward, streaks of lightning leaping from her sword. As these are simply stone conjurations, I see no reason to hold back. They will crumble before laying a single strike on an innocent life! Holy... Uh, it's so bright in here, I can't see shit! I didn't know you were this strong! As Cole hid behind Sid, he made a mental note to avoid pissing off Artemy in the future. She didn't appear to have heard them, her focus solely on her foe. The creator's chosen glared at the awestruck mage standing across the room with a snarl. I am giving you one last chance to surrender, mage! cloaked figure just watched her with utter fascination. Such brilliant celestial light. You are truly a marvelous vessel. He has done a rather magnificent job with you, hasn't he? Artemy faltered for a split second. What are you talking about? The mage flicked her their wrist. 
The dozen of the dozens of hulking stone elementals suddenly charged the crowd. Artemis snarled and swung her blade. Divine smite! Damn. The earth shook violently as deafening thunder cut through the air. The dozens of stone elementals immediately shattered into a shower of pebbles from a single swing of Artemis' blade. The world faded away into a haze of white, filled with only the acrid smell of ozone and crackling electricity. Damn! This place got fucked up!